everyone, thanks for logging on today. Today is Mother's Day. And so I took some time just to find a few quotes, sayings, uh, maybe some funnies that mums have either said out loud or perhaps maybe under their breath. So here they are and I hope that you enjoy them. First one, silence is golden. Unless you have kids, then silence is just suspicious. When I tell my kids I will do something in a minute, what I'm really saying is, please forget. Now that's a good one. Here's another. I want my children to have all the things I couldn't afford. Then I want to move in with them. Come on, that was a good one. Here we go. If I ever go missing, please follow my kids. They can find me no matter where I try and hide. Yes, please, get a new cup every time you need a drink, said no mom ever. And I bet you right now, your dishwashers are running a lot more than they used to be, seeing as everybody is stuck at home. Here's one another one. An interviewer said this, tell me about a time you once dealt with a difficult situation. The mom responds, I once had a four-year-old. The interviewer responds, you're hired. Here's one. That awkward moment when you're not sure if you actually have free time or if you're just forgetting something or maybe have lost one of your kids somewhere because that can happen. Parenting was much easier when I was raising my non-existent kids, hypothetically. Now that one is definitely true. I remember that even as a father. A couple more. Being a mom has, been, has made me really tired and so happy. That was a little bit more heartwarming. How about this one? This one, because I'm the youngest in the family. So here we go. Thank you for not telling my sisters or maybe brothers in my case that I'm your favorite. That one, maybe mums, you probably haven't said that one um, out loud. You probably said that one under your breath. And finally, here we go. Happy Mother's Day. And while I have you, quick, quick apologies for ages from 13 to 21. I hope you enjoyed those. Let's worship together. And I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met. And I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness to your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness to your glorious day. Out of the darkness into your glorious 
What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful to me. You're my peace, you're my joy. You're the name that's above every name. You're the name that I call on. Oh, there's power in your name. How I love you. Cause death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. you Silence the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Cause you have no rival. You have no Break it right now in Jesus' name. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
family and prevent disaster. Mom, we're going to be late for school. I don't think so. Whoa. Experience the phenomenon that critics are calling inspiring. Mom, I can't find number 17. Come on, Billy. Dig deep. A lot of fun. Your genius. Mom, where's my phone? Table. Keys. Mudroom. Dragon Man. Under the couch between the monkey and the flip flop. How does she do that? Created by God to demonstrate his love with grace, elegance, and poise. Have you seen my butane torch? Good morning, all you wonderful, beautiful mamas. We just want to say a big happy Mother's Day uh, from us at Impact Life Church to you. I know you've probably already been celebrated this morning by your little ones or maybe by your husband, but we just want you to know that the Lord himself is also saying a big thank you to you, especially during these times. There's a lot of extra mothering going on, it feels like. There's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 40 that talks about how God gently leads those that are with young. And I just want to encourage you with that as well, that if you've got little still in the house, if you've got any of your children still in the house, that God is gently leading you, that God is looking at you and saying, you know what, Mama, you got to give yourself a little bit of a break because you are doing fantastic. And so we just want to say congratulations to you. It's your day, even though I, I bet you're still doing diapers and maybe some dishes, but I hope you get a little bit of a break today. And we just want to say we love you and you are amazing. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us this morning again online. We're so thrilled that you came to spend some time with us uh, in God's Word this morning. Uh, before we get started, I want to just also uh, kind of second what everybody's been saying this morning, but happy Mother's Day to all you amazing moms out there. We are so grateful for every mom that's part of our Impact family. You guys are amazing. You're doing a, such an amazing job raising your families in this time and in this season. So again, we just want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, and this morning, we're going to jump into the Word. And I have just some things that were stirring in my heart, just talking about the sound that we as Christians make. And you know, of course, there's so many different sounds in this earth. You actually read that in the Bible, that there's many sounds in this earth. There's many voices in this earth. And all of them have a certain significance to them. So it's important the sound that we as believers are making. And before we jump into this, I actually want you just to tune in for a sec and name that sound. Name that sound. <laughs> Name that sound. Name that sound. Awesome. Weren't those so great? 
Man, those are some funny clips on there, and it's, I'm sure you probably got three out of three because you're a smart bunch. But if you didn't, that's all right. We can always play that again another time. Uh, I want to just read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, talking about the sound that we as believers make. <clears throat> and in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 in the New Living Bible, it says this, We continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith the psalmist had when he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. Let's say that together. I believed in God, so I speak. Again, I believe in God, so I speak. One more time. I believe in God, so I speak. Now, if you believe in God, guess what you do? We already said it a few times. That's right. You speak. There is a sound that comes from the lips of every believer. Now, the question is, what do I speak? Or what is the sound that I make? And before I really talk about that answer about what sound do we as believers make, I first want to answer this question is what sound don't we make? And so I want you just to look down with me in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 and verse 32. We're going to read a couple of verses here, Evan, from the Passion Bible. <clears throat> and Jesus says some very profound things to us. But first of all, what sound don't we believers make? The sound that we don't make is a sound of worry. We are not worriers. We don't release a sound of worry. And I want to look at this, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, it says, Jesus said, so then, forsake your worries. Why would you say, what will we eat? Or, what will we drink? Or, what will we wear? For that is what the unbelievers chase after. Doesn't your heavenly Father already know the things your body requires? So as I said, right from here, Jesus, the first thing he says to us is, what do we do with worry? He says to forsake worry. Get, get rid of it. Don't say, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What am I going to have? All of these things are dominating the thoughts of unbelievers. And he says again, doesn't your heavenly father already know those things which you have need of? So we are not here to release a sound of worry. Again, I want to just read this, this quote from 2 Corinthians 4. We believe in God. So we speak. We believe in God, so we speak. So we are not releasing a sound of worry because that's not who we are. You know, so what do we do with worry? What do we do with all these cares and anxieties that we may have? Well, in Psalm chapter 55 and verse 22, it says, Here's what I've learned through all of this. Leave all of your cares and your anxieties at the feet of the Lord, and measureless grace will strengthen you. Man, isn't that so good? So we are not here. You and I, we are not people of worry. We're not people of anxiety. We are not people of concern or this just this worry that overtakes us, that we release a sound of worry. No, no, no. We are people that believe in God, so we speak. There's a different sound about you and I. Now, the second thing that I want to make mention of here is that we are people who do not speak fear. We are not full of fear or fearful that we release a sound of fear. Let me just give you this story. You know, Mark chapter uh, 4, verse 38 and 40. I want to just read these verses to you. But this is right. Jesus told the disciples to cross the boat to the other side. And uh, they were going to go across this lake. Jesus had just performed a tremendous miracle and they were just about to go. And uh, all of a sudden, they're, as they're going across, Jesus falls asleep in the back of this boat. And a huge storm is erupting and just, you know, winds blowing everywhere. The waves are going high. And we pick it up here in verse 38. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion, and the disciples woke him up, shouting. Now I want you to notice, shouting, this is what they released. Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? So you can see right here, Jesus was not pleased with the release, the sound that was released from their hearts, the sound that was released from their lips. Why? Because it was full of fear. It was questioning God. Jesus, don't you care? Like, come on, you're fast asleep on a boat. Don't you care about us? Don't you care that we're all about to die? Jesus was not okay with that sound coming from their lips. So, and again, I'm not saying that we don't acknowledge <clears throat> that things, are, things in our lives that concern us or give us the opportunity to fear, they're not there. I'm not saying that we just ignore them and pretend that, you know, hard times don't come and, you know, the opportunities for worry, the opportunities for fear don't come. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying is as we acknowledge those things, we can release a different sound. 
And you give it really a, a cool insight into the life of Paul here. And, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 really is a powerful verse, or sorry, a passage that you could just study and really dive into and get so much out of this. And I want to, again, go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and look at verse 8 through 9, because Paul realized something here that we have to understand that the sounds that we release, they attract. We're attracting either God and His goodness and His blessings, or they're going to be attracting the enemy, the devil, and all of the curses that he loves to bring. So what we have to be very careful on the sounds that we're releasing because we are attracting different things. And, the, and I'm going to show you here, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 and 9. Paul says this, We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed. We are perplexed, meaning we don't know what to do, but never driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Don't you just love those words that Paul says? I mean, he's acknowledging, yeah, these are the things that are happening. I'm being pressed on every single side by troubles, by hard times, but I'm not knocked down. I'm not driven to despair. I'm, yeah, I may fall down, but I'm going to get up again. He always put a but after the troubles that he was going through. Yeah, he acknowledged it. The things may be tough. This coronavirus that we're experiencing and just now it's getting annoying and the frustrations that are coming with it. Yeah, but I'm not driven to despair. But it will not lead me into discouragement. But it won't lead me into frustration. We have to be careful. Now it's important that you and I are releasing a proper sound in the season that we're in now. As we continue to move forward, it is vital that we continue our sound of ones that believe in God. Don't get caught up in sounding like the world. Don't get caught up in sounding like other people who don't know God the way that you and I know God. There is a certain sound that we release because we know Him. Now again, how do we have a proper sound? How do we speak properly? Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Look down, just scroll down on your page there, uh, verse 17 and 18. And in the Passion Bible, it says it like this. We view our slight short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. And I want to read that one more time to you because especially in what, what's happening global-wise, we've got to see this. And again, I'm answering this question right now. How do we have a proper sound? How do we speak properly? And we know we believe in God, so we speak. Well, how could Paul say all these things? Oh, I'm pressed on every side, yet I'm not driven to despair. How can he say that? I may be perplexed, but I ain't given up. How can you have that mentality? How can you think that way? Look again here, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. He says, we view, so we look at, our eyes look at our slight short-lived troubles in light of eternity. We see our difficulties. Now again, we see our, what? Our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory far beyond all comparison because we don't focus our, our attention on what is seen but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but the unseen realm is eternal. So again, how are we going to speak properly? How do we release a proper sound? Number one is we have to have a proper perspective. Perspective is everything. How do you view the troubles that you face? How are you even viewing this whole pandemic that the world is talking about and freaked out about? How are you viewing it? There's one of two ways you could view it. Number one, do you see these troubles working for you to produce and reveal the greatness of God in you? Or do you see these troubles and always complain, looking at, well, why, can't, why does this always happen to happen to me? Or why is this going on? Why can't this just end? Trying to get you to quit or trying to rob something from you. It is so important that you and I have a proper perspective to the troubles that we face. Because when we have a proper perspective on the troubles that we face, instead of rather it working against us and trying to do harm to us, Paul's saying here, I'm actually flipping that flow and I'm now using these troubles as an opportunity to reveal the greatness of God in me, to reveal the love of God in me, to reveal that God is for me and this, this is powerful. This is vital for you and I to grasp and understand that everything that's happening around us, the troubles that happen, yeah, it may be happening to you, but know what? God is able to turn that around and now put a weight of glory, His goodness and His greatness in you to not only overcome it, but to be a light for somebody else. 
It, so you got to hold it in the balance of eternity. Don't just think of, you know, 2020. Think of this in light of eternity. It changes your perspective, right? So again, how do I speak properly? I have to have a proper perspective on the troubles that come to me, right? Everybody's got them. So we're going to say when troubles come near you, you don't want to release the sound. Oh, troubles are just coming to me. And that's just it. Everything's just so hard. Why can't things just get better? No, 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 no. We don't want to release that sound. We want to release the sound that we believe in God. We believe in God, so we speak. Yes, troubles may be coming near me, but my God has never left me. Yes, this may be happening to me. Sickness may be trying to attack itself against my body. But I thank God that by the stripes of Jesus, He has healed me. He has made me well. Finances. Man, finances can be talking to you. Oh man, there's not enough. You ain't going to have enough. Well, thank God. May all of a sudden be a financial situation going on in your life. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, there's a different sound that comes from us than the sound that is out in the world. And as believers, we're not supposed to sound like them. We don't talk like them. We don't sound like them because there's something on the inside of us that's greater and bigger than anything that this world could ever get. And we know that to be the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. He's there. He's there, so we want to release a sound that attracts him in what he does. So what we're doing, as I said, how are we going to speak properly? A proper perspective. And so all that is, is just an attention shift. So we're getting our eyes off of what is seen, right? I'm getting my eyes off of what is seen naturally. And what am I doing? I'm fixing my eyes on what I don't see. How do you do that? Well, that's why we have to get into the Word of God. We have to find out what God's Word says who God is, the promises that he's given us, and hold fast to that with the eyes, that you kind of heard that before, the eyes of faith or the eyes of your heart. Did you know that you have two set of eyes? You're not just stuck with these ones here. You also got eyes in your heart, the eyes of your heart. You can read that in Ephesians chapter one. Uh, Paul even prayed for the Ephesians church that the eyes of your heart would be flooded with light. So we don't live our life through these set of eyes right here. We live our life through the eyes of faith. And we can see things from the word of God. So and I remember I've said this before to everyone here, but we need to become people who live in the unseen world. Get good at, at living by what you cannot see. It's not, I believe in God, so I speak about the problems and I complain about it. No, we're not releasing that sound. I believe in God, so I speak. Say that with me. I believe God, so I speak. I believe God, so I speak. I want that phrase to just get ingrained inside of you. I believe God, so I speak. So now, what do I speak? What is my sound? First off, it says, My voice is a sound that believes the finished works of Jesus in spite of natural circumstances. I speak from the realities of the unseen and the unchanging realm. Did you catch that? How do I speak? What voice, what sound do I release? I want to say that one to you one more time. I speak from the realm, from the realities of the unseen and the unchanging realm. This is the realm of victory. Not only that, but this is the realm that you and I are called to operate in. This is where we live. Jesus said this in John's gospel, chapter 17, verse 16. He says, you are in this world, but you are not of this world. You are from another planet. You are not a physical being, temporarily sent here looking for a supernatural experience. You are a spiritual being, temporarily sent here for a natural human existence. You have to get that in your thinking. This is who we are. We are not looking for some supernatural thing to impact us and, oh, God answered my prayer. Yay, that's amazing. That's the normal. That's who we are, right? Okay. You know, in Ephesians 2 verse 6, and I want to just show you because you are from this realm originally. This is where you are seated now. Well, no, I'm sitting here in Red Deer, Alberta. I'm sitting here, whatever nation you're from or whatever city you're from, right? Thanks for tuning in, by the way. So whatever city that you may be watching this from, whatever room you be, you're not just there. The Bible says this, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, it says, God has raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms because we are united in Christ Jesus. (laughs) That's good news. You're not just stuck here. You're seated with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That right there gives you access to see into another realm. 
Man, it's so powerful. Next verse I want to show you, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. It says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, he says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. And I want to encourage you, especially in this season that we're going into, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand, he says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life and your real life right now is hidden with Christ in God. You know, other you know, translations say it this way. You need to relocate yourselves mentally. <laughs> Isn't that so good? Relocate yourselves mentally. <clears throat> other words, he says, engage your thoughts with throne room realities. Man, church, if I can encourage you, this is so important for you and I as we to continue to go in this. And we know this, like just if you have this in your understanding, the world is going to get darker and darker. We get that. But as it gets darker, guess what happens to you and I? We get and live in the brightness of God. It gets brighter and brighter. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18 talks about the pathway of the righteous. It doesn't get dark and gloomy. The world gets dark and gloomy, but for you and I, it gets brighter and brighter. Man, just think of that. It's, that's so, and the brighter it gets, the more clear you're able to see things. So stay close to Him. Let the unseen realities of heaven that we can't see with these natural eyes, but you can see them with the eyes of your heart. Let those become your reality. Let those become what you look to. Let those become your source of joy. Because I'll tell you this, there is so much depression. There is so much discouragement. There is so much pain in this world. But guess what? Your joy is not dependent on the world. Your joy, your peace, the goodness of it comes from Him and it comes from the inside. So you and I, it's important that we learn to look and to see things that we can't see. We have to. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by what we believe. What do we believe? We believe God. We believe what He said. So we walk and live by what He said. Because there is joy in this word. The Bible that you have on your lap, the verses that are coming up on the screen right now, these verses can bring you absolute complete joy and peace that passes all natural understanding. It's able to do that. Now, let's talk about this, the believer sound. And this is, we'll see if, I mean, as the Lord leads us, we'll continue to dive more into some of these, these truths but I really want to get this, a believer sound. There is a sound that you and I make. And the sound that I want to talk about real briefly with you is the sound of joy. We are people of joy, right? <laughs> people of joy. In Psalm chapter 5, let's look at this. Verse 11 and 12. In the New King James Bible, it says this. Let all those rejoice. Everybody say it with me. Rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you, God, you defend them. Let all those who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. A believer's sound is a sound of joy, is a sound of rejoicing. Now, I want you to look at this again. He said this, um, let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Do you trust God? Yeah? Then guess what we do? We rejoice. <laughs> um, do you love the name of Jesus? Guess what do you do? You are joyful in Him. This is just normal. You don't have to wait for a joke. You don't have to wait till somebody gives you these, oh, this makes me feel good, happy thing. No, 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 no. You can just rejoice in God now. Why? Because you believe Him and you love His name. So the proper response to anybody who's trusting God is rejoice. Come on, rejoice. Say with me, rejoice. When's the last time you rejoiced because you knew that God was for you? When's the last time you rejoiced that you knew that God was in you? You can just celebrate these things, right? And you can do it at any time. So again, one, I want a question I want to ask you is, when do I rejoice? When do I release a joyful sound? Is it when things go well? Is it when this stupid virus is all done? No, 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 no. I do this before. I rejoice because God defends me. I rejoice because God is for me. I rejoice because I love Him. This is just the proper response. And I want to just show you this. Psalm 150 verse 6. Uh, I want to just show you this is the new standard for releasing 
a sound of praise. You ready? Psalm 150, verse 6. It says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> that breath in your lungs, He gave it to you. So the proper response is, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, just take 10 seconds right now. Lord, we praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. Thank you that you are our God. Thank you that you are for us. Thank you that you love every single person in these living rooms or these kitchens right now. Lord, we give you glory for who you are. Man, you can just start doing that and just watch the joy just bubble up on the inside of you. And it's so important that you and I, especially as we go forward, we need to learn to be people of rejoicing. This is the sound that we release. Why? Because the joy of the Lord, as we see in Nehemiah, what is it? It's your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. No joy, no strength. So let me encourage you, release the sound of joy. And that could be in a laugh. That could be in a shout. That could be in a dance. That could be, you can make yourself happy by doing different things. Remember when I was a kid, again, and um, growing up and with my brother as well, my parents would say to us, if we came up with a bad attitude, they would say, dance until your attitude changes. And of course, you know, I didn't enjoy hearing that a whole lot because it's like, well, no, just leave me alone. I want to be grumpy. And sad to say, a lot of believers just leave me alone. I, I, I want to be grumpy. People like being angry. People like being grumpy. Well, that's not, that's not the sound we want to release, nor is that proper. So I remember, you know, dance so you attitude changes. So, you know, you dance. And over time, it just it starts to change your attitude. Now, I do that with my kids. If sometimes they wake up on the wrong side of the bed, anybody have one of those? Yee. Anyways, if they wake up in a, in a bad mood, guess what? We dance it off. I have the, my kids bless me so much. When I see them rejoicing, I mean, I put on, you know, I put on a wild song and we start dancing together, you know, especially uh, Max and Jace, their hands just go right up in the air and they just start worshiping God. And it is amazing just to see how things change. So let me encourage you, let your home be an atmosphere of praise. And throughout our days, our, the music in our home is constantly going. It's always going. And you'll always catch, you know, either Jace or Max, London even once in a while too. She'll, they'll walk into a room and all of a sudden they'll hear a song and it's, they'll just start singing along to it. it. It's so vital that we want to get that on the inside of us because it's what we're doing is we're releasing a sound into our atmosphere. We're releasing a sound into our home. And the atmosphere I want in my home, and I know the atmosphere you want in your home, we want a place where the Holy Spirit can dwell, where the Holy Spirit can move, where the Holy Spirit can speak. And guess where that place is? It's a place of joy. Joy. Did you know Jesus is fun? Jesus is joyful. God in heaven. You know, it says this, Psalms chapter 2 and verse 8, I believe. It says, he that sits in the heavens, he laughs. He laughs. This is what he's doing. So it's so vital then rather than looking at all the problems through the eyes of this, this natural realm and all oh, this is taking forever. I can't, why are all these hard things happening to me? You got to switch that. You got to get a new shift, a new mindset on that and look from it from an eternal perspective. And rather than seeing something happening to you, look at it going, this is an opportunity for God to demonstrate himself on the inside of me. We are releasing a sound of joy. Come on, say it with me one more time. Shout it out. Joy! I got joy! When? When I get a new car? Does it say, let everything, let everyone that got a new car, praise the Lord. Let everyone that got a new, new outfit, praise the Lord. Let anyone who got a haircut this week, praise the Lord. Well, that's kind of nice. Let anyone that got a new home, praise the Lord. Th that's not the standard. The standard is let anyone who has breath, praise the Lord. So that is the new standard for your praise. That is a standard for my praise. We don't want to let the devil shut us up. We don't want to let circumstances take our joy and keep us shut down. You know, look at this, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Paul encouraging the Philippian church. And, you know, Philippians is called the book of joy. And I'd encourage you, go through the book of Philippians because Paul wrote this book while he was in prison, right? So, I mean, <laughs> hey, until you're in, in chains and you're in bonds... And you're in the prison. They're not like nice prisons that we got today. And they got like the big screens and a nice gym that you can work out in stuff and, and cots. No, these gyms back in those days, man, they were nasty. We had an opportunity when we were in Rome to go look at the, at the prison that Paul was in when he wrote the book of Philippians. Man, this is when all the sewage from all of Rome would come underneath this palace. And that's where Paul was in prison and everybody's other, you know, other, all their stuff. 
This is where he was chained up high and he was basically in dark, swimming and just hanging out in filth, manure, urine, all this garbage. And this is where he wrote the book of joy. So until then, we're okay. <laughs> you got Wi-Fi, you're okay. Okay. So Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, it says this, Whatever happens, keep living your lives based on the reality of the gospel of Christ, which reveals Him, Jesus, to others. Then when I come to see you or hear good reports of you, I'll know that you stand united in one spirit and one passion, celebrating together as conquerors in the faith of the gospel. Now, verse 28, I'm going to read it to you in the New Living Bible. It says, Don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed, but that you are going to be saved even by God Himself. Don't be intimidated in any way by your enemies. I am not going to let the devil see or even let him think that he's winning by my countenance. You know, I, I, uh, I was watching a boxing, this was a while ago, and, uh, you know, just a boxing match that I was watching. And anyways, the, the boxers were going at it, of course, they're, you know, hitting each other. And this one guy got a solid hit. Like, this guy came across, whack, hit him right across the mouth. And of course, you see, like, the, the mouth guard fly out. You know, if they do it in slow motion, you just see, like, his face just getting squished and wow, all this stuff coming out. But all of a sudden, as, as he did that, he came back, he looked up, and smiled at the guy. Now, <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I were to ever get into a fist fight with somebody and all of a sudden I, man, I give him my best shot and he turns and looks at me and smiles, I go, oh shoot, that was my best shot. Oh, what am I gonna do here? Well, the devil is doing everything he can to get you and I to fear, to worry, to doubt the promises of God. When troubles come your way, Rather than going, oh God, what am I going to do? No, we are people that believe God, so we speak. And I'm not going to let the devil say it. So anytime he brings on something to me, rather than succumbing to, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to look and I'm going to go, praise the Lord. What an opportunity for God to demonstrate. You know what that will do to him? It will completely freak him out. It will actually just go, man, I shouldn't have messed with this guy. Look, he knows too much. And that's so vital. We know too much. We know God. We know the promises of God. We believe God, so we speak. We release a different sound. And so anytime the enemy tries to come and attack us in any kind of way, what do we do? We stand and we smile and say, bring it on, your best shot. Bring it on. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul actually says, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Bring on the best shot you've got, devil, because my God is in me and I'm more than able to overcome this because greater is he who is in me than he that is in this world. And lastly, I want to just show you this. Here's a, here's a cool example of the life of Paul. So he wrote this, but before he wrote it, it was in him and he must have lived this way. And in the book of Acts, I want you to turn there real quick. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26. But if you read the whole account, it's, it's quite the story. Uh, Paul and Silas are in a particular city there and uh, all of a sudden there is a, a demon-possessed girl that was constantly you know, yelling at them. These are the servants of the Most High God. They come to tell you the way to salvation. And all of a sudden, one time, Paul got so fed up, he turned and he spoke to the spirit in her and said, you come out of her in the name of Jesus. She came out, or the devil came out of her. And then the merchants that were controlling this girl, they were upset because now that was, that was their way of income, right? They were after the money. So what they do, they dragged Paul and Silas and told everybody, these guys are wrecking the way that we're supposed to live. And so the Bible actually says, actually, if you read it for yourself there, Acts chapter 16, they were brutally beaten. They were so whipped. They were, and it says with, uh, let me just read it to you real quick. Acts 16, uh, verse 22, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. Man, they were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure that they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet into the stocks. Now, first of all, wooden sticks, a wooden rods. Anybody ever bruised a bone before? Like ever, you know, you ever had a hammer or something, you hit yourself on the nail and all of a sudden like, yeah, your, your finger may have gotten black or blue, but you're like, man, I can't even bend my finger. Not that it's broken. It's because you bruised a bone. 
I bruised my knee bone once, and oh, that was tremendous pain. Well, what happened here? These guys were beaten with rods, not for the sake of breaking bones, but to bruise bones. And bruised bones take a long time naturally to heal. So these guys were severely beaten with wooden rods. And now they could have gone, why does this always happen to us? We're just trying to be good Christians. We're just, we just helped a girl that was possessed by a demon. And this is the thanks we get. No, they didn't go that way. Look at this. Verse 25 and verse 26. It says, around midnight, Paul and Silas, what were they doing? Whining and complaining, releasing a sound of, why does this happen to me? Or worry or fear? No, they were praying and singing songs to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Verse 26, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Now, I wanna just encourage you with this before we end off here. The sound you release in your rejoicing is your address in the spirit. If you wanna, I mean, again, remember we talked about the sound you release is either attracting God and his word and his goodness towards you, or you're attracting the enemy and everything that he wants to do in your life. You choose who you're attracting, right? People kind of go, well, you know, God just wants to, he wants to. No, no, he needs a sound. He needs to hear sounds of faith. He needs to hear sounds. Okay, God, this may be happening to me, but God, you are good. I know that you're faithful to your word. You're watching over this. And they hold fast to what he said. He's looking for that. And so right here, this, all of a sudden there was a massive earthquake. It wasn't all of a sudden by, you know, coincidence that an earthquake happened at that jail. No, this earthquake was released because of the sound Paul and Silas were making. What was the sound? Their sound was, I believe God. So what do they do? I believe God, so I rejoice. I believe God, so I sing. I believe God, so I say. I believe God, so I dance. I believe God, so I shout. This is the response they had, even though the circumstances around them were horrible. Suddenly that earthquake came and it shook off all their bonds. All the jail doors flew open and everybody in that prison got free. And he've actually, that's where the book of Philippians, that's where actually that church began was right here. All those men that were in there were obviously amazed by what took off and they all got born again. This is the church of Philippians right here at Philippi, right there. That's how that church started. And where did it begin? It began with a sound of releasing joy. The last thing I want to mention to you is rejoicing is a demonstration of the victory that Jesus has came and purchased you. This is what we're doing. When tough times come your way, and instead of releasing a sound of, oh, eh, you release a sound of, God is for me. God, I thank you. Together, we are more than conquerors in this. You release that sound. You know what you're doing? You're demonstrating to the enemy that I win, and he loses. And this is so important as we go forward in these days ahead that we get church. Church, we get our sound back. We get our sound back. Regardless of what they say, of what we can do or can't do, I don't care. I'm not going to lose my sound. I'm not going to, you know, release a sound of, oh, these people are stupid. These people, what's wrong with all these idiots out there? I'm not going to go that route. And I encourage you, don't go that way. We are going to continue to release a sound that, of those that trust God. I believe God, so I speak. I believe God, so I rejoice. So let me encourage you right now in your home, men, families, gather together. Just, just take a second. Let's just, let's change the atmosphere in our home. And you can do that very simply by just throwing up your hands and saying, Lord, we love you. We give you a place to operate from. We just respect you, God. We respect your presence on the inside of us. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in our home. You're welcome in my life. Thank you for living on the inside of me. Just do that, families, together. Just after this service is all done, just gather together and take some time to release a sound. And because I guarantee you this, that a sound, God doesn't need a, you know, thousands and thousands of people to do it. But I believe Impact Life Church, we're in this city, we're in this region, in this province, and in this nation to release a sound of victory for God. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you and we will see you soon. Let's talk about the tithe. So often people get afraid when you begin to talk about money, but we really shouldn't be afraid of that at all because God is not interested in taking something from you. He is really looking for a way to get something to you. And so in order for 
us to be in the blessing of God, we have to learn to give. After all, God is the greatest giver of them all. And how shall he not with him, with Jesus, give every good thing to us? There's a specific way that God is able to get things to us, and that is through the tithe. We, you can see in Genesis chapter 14, how that Melchizedek was the high priest of that day, and Abram paid tithes to him, meaning that Abram trusted God through Melchizedek to take care of his future. Now, let's bring that over to the New Testament, where Jesus has become our high priest. He, Jesus, is representing us in heaven in such a way that we bring glory to God and it benefits us. Not only is Jesus the, the high priest of our confession, but the book of Hebrews also explains that he is the high priest of our tithe. So when we pay our tithe, then you are activating the ministry of Jesus in heaven, which is a more excellent ministry. Let's quickly read what one scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 8. It says, And here men that die receive tithes, but there, that's up in heaven, he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he is alive. So the tithe really is twofold. First of all, you pay the physical part, the money, part to your pastor who is a man representing Jesus on this earth. But the second part has to do with tithing, meaning you have to say something to your high priest. After all, he is the high priest of your confession. That means you begin to say things, thank you, Lord, like such as, thank you, Lord, that you have taken me out of the kingdom of darkness and you have placed me in the kingdom of your dear son, where I now rule and reign with Jesus Christ. Thank you that because I've paid my tithe, my future is secure. You have taken care of my finances for the future. I will not lack for anything. I will not lack for ability. I will not lack for opportunity and I will not lack for money in Jesus name. For a limited time, Impact You, our online Bible school, has a free course available called Real Faith, and it's taught by Pastor Jeff Lowen. To gain access to this free course, please register by visiting impactlife.ca or impactingcanada.ca. This week, there are two Connect times. The first one is for the guys, and we will be meeting at Notre Dame uh, parking lot at 7.30 on Wednesday night. Um, and also on Wednesday night, myself and my wife Kyla, we're gonna be down at Kin Canyon. And the plan on that one is to meet at seven o'clock again on Wednesday. And we're gonna walk from Kin Canyon to the Centrium and back. So we just welcome anybody to come on that. If you have a dog, you can bring a dog. And if there's a bunch of us, that's cool. We'll just make sure we're social distancing and just enjoying each other's company while walking the paths of Red Deer. See you then. Join with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays for prayer at 12 noon on live stream. Also, if you are in need of prayer, on our website, we have a prayer request form that you can fill out and we will be sure to lift up your prayer throughout the week. Thanks again for joining with us this morning. I trust you were encouraged by the word and by our time of worship together. Just wanna let you know, I guess a few reminders for you this week. First one is that Pastor Joel will continue to uh, have his God Talks with special guests on Tuesdays. We've also been handing out impact gift bags because we just wanna let you know that we, we love you and that we miss you. And so we've started doing that already. If you haven't received one yet, we should be coming to your door. If you don't receive one in the next couple of weeks, it might be because we don't know where you live and we may need your new address. So if you could let us know what that is, we would really, really appreciate it because we do want to, to connect with each and every one of you. And lastly, we just wanna encourage you to be impactors in your community. This is a great opportunity to to just check on your neighbor, to maybe connect with a, a friend that you haven't connected with for a while, or perhaps it's even just connecting with somebody in our church family that you may know and, and, and wonder how they're doing. 
this is a great opportunity to do that. So we just encourage you that with that. And we just, again, thank you for joining with us today. And we just trust that you'll have a really great week. We miss you. You belong here.